craze that has become a global marketing phenomenon. Pokemon has captured the imagination of children around the world and billions and billions of dollars from their parents' wallets. It's now so pervasive schools have banned Pokemon in the playgrounds. But while adults might be mystified, might tut-tut about unhealthy obsessions and manipulation, there's no escaping Pokemon, the biggest thing for kids since Mickey Mouse. Charizard's going to smash it. <laughs> I will drive across the land, searching for and wide. It's Pokemon to understand the power that's inside. Look in almost any Australian backyard and you'll see our kids have been captured by monsters. Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, Venusaur, Squirtle, Wartoodle, Blastoise, Charmander, Charmeleon, Charizard, Pikachu, Rikki. Sundays in the park have become open-air markets for Pokemon trading cards. Pikachu, Raichu, Sandshu, Sandslash, Mewtwo. It's happening all over the world. Kids are in a new fantasy universe and speaking a new language. Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, Venusaur, Chameleon, Charizard, Squirtle, Wordle, Blastoise. The greatest secret is kids get it and adults don't. So therefore, by ownership, when youngsters of five, six, seven start talking their language, Pokemon language, uh, initially parents do not understand it and they take a little while to get onto it. And boys and girls, moms and dads, are you ready for Pikachu? Pikachu, monster number 25 out of 151, is by far the most popular. Well, hi once again, everybody, and welcome. And I'd like to welcome to the stage Pikachu. Let's give him a big cheer and a big round of applause. Almost wherever you look, Pokemon is there. Video games, trading cards. I will be a Pokemon master. TV cartoons and a movie. <laughs> and hundreds, yes, hundreds of licensed Pokemon branded playthings. Fred Gaffney holds some of those lucrative licenses in Australia. It's enormous, isn't it? It, it really is. Uh, over the years, great crazes have come every five years, but this new craze, Pokemon, works on about eight different platforms. And it's the kids that discover the idea, a bit like Coca-Cola yo-yos or marbles. And once they take ownership, passionate ownership of an idea, it's almost unstoppable. In Tokyo, some six years ago, Satoshi Tajiri combined his passion for insect collecting with a passion for computers to create a video game. He sold it to Nintendo. Nintendo has just launched to the trade its Pokemon range for next Christmas at the New York Toy Fair. It's here we got a glimpse of what we'll be forking out for when the goodies hit Australia. Today, there's no denying that we all live in a Pokemon world. And let me be the first one to break the bad news to you parents out there. It's not going away. It's just going to get bigger and better. Nintendo's American Vice President, Gail Tilden, gets much of the credit for westernizing this Japanese concept. Some of them had very Japanese sounding names, Fushigidane, we changed to Bulbasaur. It's a, it's a reptilian character with a flower bulb on its back. Oh, it's so cute. It's the best of all. We did actually work on a strategy that said, hey, let's get the TV show out a couple weeks in front of the game, followed by the game, and then all of the rest of the licensing. Toy marketing is as cool and calculated as that, is it? <laughs> um, as far as being calculated, we just knew that we had something that kids would love as long as we could make sure that we could get it the right exposure to them. Come with me, the time is right. And it worked. 
Pokemon swept America just as it had Japan. Then came Australia and more recently Europe. What is this section of the toy industry worth now? We think that at this point we're up to about $7 billion uh, total and uh, we expect the year 2000 will probably be the biggest year for the franchise ever because of it being so global. So what, what's a guess for how much uh, you sell maybe this year? Three to five billion. And it's not as if there's no competition. New York's Toy Fair showed us just what a crowded market it is. Robots are very much in this year. This is another example of the robotics invention system. Uh, Even Lego system has gone version. digital with the robot that paints. It'll be great on the bedroom carpet. It will be, but uh, only if we can create the robot that cleans up after it. And this from Sonny. I mean, he's programmed to actually grow up um, and, you know, become more functional as he, the more he practices walking or practices playing with his ball. He's got a learning computer inside. Now, if you pet him nicely, his eyes are, will usually be green. Oh, he's in a bad mood right now, Richard. You've upset him. <laughs> Toys here were selling well, but not as well as Pokemon. Thirty-four ninety-nine. Yes. But if it had Pikachu on the side, <laughs> how much would it be then? Uh, probably like $104.99. And this craze is not just for kids. Here's a tip. Any company on the stock exchange with even a sniff of Pokemon is worth watching. Sean McGowan analyzes toy industry shares on Wall Street. But the biggest beneficiary would be for kids entertainment, the licensing agent. So how big did they go? Their stock was kind of languishing around the $1 or $2 level and literally got as high as $90. It's pulled back now to about 30 so they've seen a huge increase in value due to Pokemon. That's hard to believe, isn't it? It's a great country, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it costs hundreds to become a full Pokemon household. A Game Boy costs $130, and then it's $50 for each game. The trading cards cost between $5 and $18 a pack, Branded toys range up to sixty dollars. School. And all that money comes from the pockets of parents of kids like these. Morning school. Like most schools in Australia and America, the Southport School on Queensland's Gold Coast is now a Pokemon free zone. We do not bring Pokemon cards to school. Remember that please, fellas, because if you do they will be taken and given back to you at the end of the day to take home, not to reappear. Nintendo's looking to reach half... Teacher Kay Hasty says the trading card obsession here was getting out of control. But the thing that I do have a bit of a worry about is when I see little children, especially ones that are sort of six, seven, eight, who become really compulsive, that they feel they just have to have more cards and they have to have more than anyone else. I'm really concerned that people come to school wanting to take advantage of their friends rather than wanting to work with their friends. Debbie Buckley's nine-year-old son, Stuart, was so obsessed with collecting, he fell victim to a kiddie con artist. He swapped three Game Boy games, which have a value of about $150, for one Pokemon card. And I actually felt that that was, you know, a fairly dangerous precedent. I could see the warning bells. How did you break him out of it? Well, I found the only way to do it with uh, Stuart was to actually take the cards away from him. Who's to blame here? Who bought the cards in the first place? Oh, look, I mean, I don't know how these things come up. I mean, yes, yeah, certainly. <laughs> Who bought the first ones? Oh, certainly Mum, you know, innocently bought a, a pack of 12. Yes, look, we all get sucked in, I suppose, duped by the ads and the television shows. And it's not difficult to be sucked in, because Nintendo intentionally feeds children's obsession with the trading cards. Of the 151 cards, 16 are designated rare, because Nintendo makes them that way. You never know how many rare cards are in a sealed pack until you've bought it. So the more you buy, the greater the chance of getting them. You intentionally make some cards scarce. Now, well, that's, you're manipulating the market. No, I don't think so. I think that's a reflection of the concept of the game. It is, it is all about collecting, and the very nature of collecting means that uh, 
some, um, some Pokemon that you collect are going to be, by their very nature, harder to collect than others. Gavin Bust is Nintendo's Australian marketing director. Because you make some cards scarce, I've got to buy more and more if I'm to be sure of getting those scarce ones. Or make more trades. Yes, but it's going to be easier to spend the money, isn't it? I don't know, maybe the kids find it easier to trade. <laughs> there is a, an element of manipulation, though, on your part. No, I don't think so. No. Oh, what you no, no, no. What I think children are being exploited from those people who invented Pokemon, because um, the card the card game, all right, it went very good, but then it started to get bigger, and they thought it right. The people. Some happened to you? How come? It's just sort of it's like smoking, addictive sort of thing. Do you think Nintendo is ripping you off? Not at all. You don't. Yeah, but what about five dollars for just a pack of cards with only eleven in it? Oh, well that's a bit of a rip-off. <laughs> I reckon there should be more cards in the pack. But some of the cards, like, you might get a really, really rare one. That's worth, say, twenty bucks, so there's your money back, if you want to sell it. What's the most expensive card you see? Charizard. I've seen it for a hundred dollars, but now it's only seventy dollars. I just brought out my Mewtwo, so now I'm going to use my psychic ability again. And the next craze is... More Pokémon. This month, Nintendo will launch a new 3D game called Pokemon Stadium to be played on its popular Nintendo 64 console. Yeah, it's because he's accurate. Brian Hartman is Nintendo's chief test pilot, so to speak. We're down to one Pokemon at five. So now the kids are playing the little game machine like this, and in essence, you're taking that and moving it up onto the big screen. Absolutely. For Pokemon. For Pokemon. So you can still battle, you can still, you know, train your Pokemon, you can still play with all of your Pokemon and battle with them. And, and later in the year come two new Game Boy games with more Pokemon characters, which of course means a whole new batch of trading cards. Those new games were launched recently in Japan. And how many have you sold in Japan? Japan, um, the first day it came out, sold nearly two million copies. Two million of these little cartridges. Two million of these little cartridges. On and the first day. On the first day. Two million on the first day at fifty dollars each. About that. That's a hundred million dollars on the first day. And actually, um, it's on schedule right now by the end of March to sell more than eight million copies. Your goal is to maximize the profits that you can make out of kids. Maximizing profits, that is a goal. Our goal is long term to have a franchise and a brand that they love and we can work with and build a strong foundation for our company for many years to come. Do you reckon you'll usurp Mickey Mouse over time? If we're lucky and if we do it right, we would love to um, manage Pikachu and the rest of the characters to be a um, better-than-Disney-esque franchise, and that is our goal.